Hey, it's Adam from Buzzy. Super excited to introduce Auto Markup to you. It's a new feature that we've got that allows you to take a Figma file and make it work. In this example, we've got a very simple fitness application um, over here, and this is our Figma file. And you can do things like you can record workouts, you can um, record some meals, you can add a workout, you can um, have a look at some exercises, um, and you can edit it and so on. So it's not the full application, but it's great for a quick um, illustration. Now, prior to this feature being available, you could take this and use the Buzzy plugin, which we've got over here, and mark up, create your data model, um, you know, field by field, you'd have to add them, and then you would have to go through and design and, and select a screen, and then, you know, I want to be able to mark that up and make it into a, a screen, and then you'd go through down to each of the, the frames within the Figma file, and you'd be marking up, you know, this is a repeating item, this is a field, and so on. So it takes a bit of effort. That's incredibly faster than actually coding it because it generates all the code for both web and native for you. Um, so you don't have to code that and you can just keep updating it from your Figma file, which is awesome. But we wanted to make it even easier. So we've released this new auto markup feature, which allows you to do a whole bunch of that stuff automatically. So the first thing we, we can do is we can uh, scan for screens. So it'll look at the Figma file and it will understand what this application is. So it, it's worked out that there's um, you know five different screens over here. It knows that the home screen is that's probably the start screen. You can modify these. You can remove screens if you've got test screens in here or ones that you're using for uh, just annotation and that. You can deselect them so they're not included when you build the application. And then the next stage is we're going to create what we call a brief. So we're going to generate a brief. A brief is like a mini product requirements document. It contains the functional specifications and the high level description of the application. And the cool thing over here is that Automark Markup will look at your file and actually generate that for you. So here we've got a description of the application. Um, we can do things like add meals, view recent meals, add workouts, view workout details. Um, it's also got a high level overview of the data model, which is going to be important for the next stage. Now you can edit this. Um, you, know, you can modify things, add, remove, anything that it's missed. Um, you know, you might know something about your application that's important. It's a good chance to be able to put that into the brief at that point in time. So once you've got that brief uh, to the next level, you're then going to generate the data model. This is the underlying database for your application. This is where the data gets stored. You need to understand things like the relationships of data. For example, a workout might have many exercises so we model that as what we call a subtable so a workout has a subtable of exercises you can also model many to many relationships um, that make up your application and the cool thing over here is that auto markup is going to create that data model for you just by looking at your file and taking in your brief as one of the inputs as well so again the, the better you describe things and um, obviously what's in the application so let's have a look at what it's done so it's come up with uh, you know, for example, if he has a meal, uh, so it's got a, you know, date, time, you know, details, um, it's got an image, uh, we've got things like the workout, a workout's got a name, it's got an image. Um, we can see over here there's a sub table, so it's worked all that out uh, for exercises, and then each exercise has a name, number of reps, and duration. That's a pretty cool starting point, and again, you can modify any of these items, um, add, remove fields, um, you know, correct the, the types, things that it maybe might have got wrong. But in this example, it seems to have got most of it right. Now this is where the fun bit. So we've got our brief, we've got our data model. Now we're gonna mark up our screen. So um, I would work in small batches here. So usually maybe three to five screens at a time, um, you know, a little subsystem of things and get them working, as opposed to you might have, you know, 50 or 100 plus screens in an application. Now this will take a few minutes. Uh, it runs them all in parallel. We are using OpenAI's 01 preview model at this point in time. We're just seeing really, really good results out of that. And it does take a bit longer, but we think it's worth waiting for. Now, if you were to go and mark up these screens and fields and actions and fields um, and, and you know everything manually using our plugin, uh, it's going to probably take you between 30 to 60 minutes per screen. Now, that still is way, way, way faster than developing it, but this new auto markup feature will probably do this within a few minutes. So I'm going to pause over here. We'll come back in about a minute and a bit, and we'll see how far it's got.
Okay, so that actually took about two minutes, which is pretty fast. Um, it runs all of those in parallel. And now we can actually at a point where we can preview this application. Uh, this will be in a browser. So what it's going to do is it's now going to take the application in Figma file that's been marked up using the plugin, using Auto Markup. It's done it automatically for us. And it's going to generate that first version of the application. Now, there's a QR code over there. You can view it in a browser. You can open it up on your device. Um, if you want to publish it into the app stores, there's some extra steps that you need to go through, obviously linking it with your store. But there's, um, you know, very quickly you can get something in the hands of a user to get actual real feedback and use the application. Now, everything that gets created over here is through, let's have a look at this um, in the browser. So um, I did click the option over there to generate some sample data, uh, which again is a huge time saver. And here we can see is the first version of this application. How cool is this? So again, it's, it's a fully responsive web application. Um, we can see over here we've got um, some meals, and I'll show you the back end in a second. Uh, we can go into um, a, a particular workout, and we can see over here we can, um, we can add in, uh, let's say we're going to do um, reps over here, we're going to do uh, or duration, uh, we'll add that in, and it's adding in items to the database. So again, um, you could things like the edit screens over here should work. So now you can edit um, that item. All of these are automatically wired up for you um, using this. So I could come in, I could add a new workout. Um, so let's just say, uh, you know, morning uh, session. Uh, we'll just use, um, to, you know, today's date. Um, let's put the duration over here as 100 minutes. And we're just going to use some um, Laura Mipson over here to paste in. And here we're going to submit that exercise. So again, that's added um, a new item over here, which is my morning session. I didn't put a photo or anything in there. Um, let's have a look at that. And we can see there we've got our morning session. So again, so this is real live data um, that is editable. Again, we didn't do like the detail screens for the, for the meals and that. Um, and, and, you know, depending on which items you've got over here, you can um, um, wire up all the navigation um, and so on. So let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the back end. So I'm going to click done over here, and we're going to go into expert mode. We'll see what's actually been done. So um, we've marked up things like the screens, and if we looked at this form, um, what it's going to be doing over here is it's mapping between the elements that are on the screen through to the data model in the back end, and things like actions like navigation or add, delete, you know, um, edit, etc. So in this example, that name field on the screen is mapped to the workout name field. Um, likewise, if we looked at the submit button over here, um, let's go up, uh, submit, that's an action which is a submit and so on. Now again, as I mentioned before, you can do this manually using this Buzzy plugin, um, you don't have to use auto markup. It's just a lot quicker to get to that first version of a working application by getting the AI to do that automatically for you. Now, if we look over here, we've also got access to the Buzzy workspace. Now, this is the back end of the application. So it's running in the cloud and, you know, we've got all the data uh, models that exist for that application. So over here we can see, um, you know, this is the underlying database. So uh, if we looked over here, we, we, we had the, um, that's the, the workout that we added um, before, which was, um, you know, and again, you could add in exercises and that through the back end. So you didn't have to develop the CMS at the back end. That's automatically created for you. But you could, in as per the example, you can create, read, update, delete through the application as well. So it actually, because we had screens defined for that. If you didn't have screens defined, you wouldn't be able to do that through the, through the front end. Uh, because we did have screens that we could do things like add a workout or add an exercise and, and so on. So whatever you design in the Figma file. The nice thing as well is that if you wanted to come in and change something in the Figma file after you've got this first version, you modify it here, you just come in, you hit update app or that screen, instantly it's available both either as that web application or a native application. So super excited about this new feature. We're just speeding up the process of getting you, your applications working in the hands of your users for that valuable feedback. We'd love to hear what you're doing with the application. Please reach out to us. We can't wait to find out the awesome stuff that you build with this. Thanks for watching.